ICOS, the Integrated Carbon Observation System, is a European research infrastructure. You have perhaps the idea of uh, a train, and the train needs infrastructure, it needs tracks, it needs uh, uh, the, the train stations and so on. And if we think that science is the train, then the infrastructure that uh, provides science with data is uh, what we are doing in ICOS. We have uh, invested about 100 million euros in concrete and steel, but you can't see it at one place. It's distributed like a, a railway network. It's distributed all over Europe. And with these stations uh, that we have distributed all over Europe, we are measuring the greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, but also the fluxes between terrestrial ecosystems and the atmosphere or the ocean and the atmosphere. Well, perhaps it's also important to note that ICOS is a cooperation of 13 European countries at the moment. So I think that's uh, a, an important feature of research infrastructures. Research infrastructures need the cooperation or the pooling of resources. You may imagine a big telescope or a big uh, accelerator that's so costly that not each and every country in Europe can buy one or build one. And that's the same with, with our infrastructure. I think. Uh, uh, pooling the resources, pooling the power, pooling the money, pooling the scientific community uh, brings a lot of benefits and advantages to the European community. And that's why we are working on the European level and uh, also distribute our stations all over Europe uh, to get uh, a real European picture of the greenhouse gases. Well, uh, you may be well familiar with the problem of climate change. We uh, are facing an increase of the global average temperature currently of about one degree. And it's uh, suggested, uh, or not suggested, it's uh, predicted that this will raise further. And the reason for that is uh, that we have an increased concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Um, this increased concentration uh, of greenhouse gases, mainly of CO2, is coming mm. from uh, a, a disturbance uh, of the global carbon cycle by, uh, uh, by industry, by human beings. Uh, so we are causing uh, this increase in the uh, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere by burning fossil fuel and this perturbation of the of the global carbon cycle is finally ending up with the concentrations of CO2, but also other greenhouse gases like methane and nitrous oxide um, by increasing these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And they have an interesting pattern, these greenhouse gases. They are absorbing the infrared radiation, which is uh, reflected or resent uh, from uh, any warm surface and uh, also from the warm Earth surface. Um, and this is causing some kind of a he heating effect. So the, the Earth's surface is heated by the, by the solar radiation, which is coming uh, through the atmosphere without uh, a big disturbance uh, because it's a different wavelength. And then it's uh, um, re-radiated from the warm surface of the Earth. But in this uh, spectrum, the greenhouse gases are absorbing uh, the, the radiation and in a way keeping the warmth uh, at, the, uh, at the atmosphere and uh, in the Earth system. And to um, balance this incoming and outgoing radiation, you need just a hotter surface to get more of this infrared radiation out, of, out to space again. And that's the process we are currently going through. We have uh, since 200 years uh, increased uh, or burned fossil fuel and with that increased the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. And uh, now the whole system is uh, looking for a new equilibrium, equilibrium and this new equilibrium is coming with higher temperatures. And uh, of course these higher temperatures have a lot of impact uh, on the whole uh, biological earth system. We have droughts, we have more rain, we have floods, uh, we have um, much more extreme events 
the ice uh, in the Arctic and Antarctica and Greenland is melting, uh, which will cause uh, sea level rise. And this all has a huge impact on, on our societies. And that's why we basically need to measure the greenhouse gases. Well, I think I'm not going into the details of the, of the uh, instruments we are using. Uh, in principle, we are using the same um, physical um, phenomenon that uh, is also causing the, the climate change. We are using the absorption of light in, uh, by, the, by the greenhouse gases. So we are sending mainly a laser beam in many of these instruments, we are sending a laser beam through a, a chamber where uh, atmospheric uh, gases or the air from the atmosphere is, is uh, sucked through. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the laser beam is exactly in this uh, wavelength where uh, this greenhouse gas is absorbing. So since the greenhouse gas is absorbing parts of the light, we can detect uh, by the reduced light that is coming to a detector, we can detect the, the concentration uh, of a specific gas in, in the air. And uh, we are basically putting many of these sensors to tall towers. And then we, for example, we are using a radio tower and then we are measuring a profile from 300 meters, 150 meters, 75 meters, 30 meters, 10 meters, something like that. So we get a, a very, um, a dense picture of what's going on in the atmosphere. We can use uh, more or less the same method uh, also by satellites. Uh, and then we use the, the sunlight that is reflected by the Earth's surface. And again, we are looking at the spectra and where light is absorbed. Uh, and with these satellites, we can get the more spatial picture. And with these uh, ICO stations, uh, we get a very uh, high temporal resolution of the, of the greenhouse gases, which means that we get a, um, a very good picture of what is the concentration at a certain point, at a certain time. Um, then the next thing, important thing is to, to, to look where it, is it coming from um, or where is it going to, because the global carbon cycle is uh, a complex mix of anthropogenic and uh, natural processes. We have the natural process of photosynthesis that is taking up CO2 out of the atmosphere. We have the natural process of respiration, giving CO2 to the, to the atmosphere. And then we have the anthropogenic processes of land use change and uh, burning of fossil fuels that add additional CO2 to the atmosphere. And uh, to understand where this is uh, coming from, we have to uh, calculate also the transport. And uh, this is done with, in principle, with uh, all the weather information that we have. That's why we perhaps in this building of the Finnish Meteorological Institute, we are closely cooperating with many national weather services because they have all this transport and weather information. And uh, with that, we can in principle calculate where the, the carbon uh, dioxide or the other greenhouse gases are coming from. Well, that's quite easy. Our greenhouse gases are not stopping at national borders. So uh, it's a global problem. Um, the, the emissions uh, are global. Also the, the natural things are global. And sometimes a molecule of CO2 that is uh, are coming out of a power plant, a coal-fired power plant in Helsinki, might be transported even to the tropical rainforest in Africa and, and, and um, be fixed by photosynthesis there. So uh, we have this big uh, transport um, uh, systems uh, globally, but uh, we also have, uh, um, of course, uh, global impact. So. Uh, it might be even favorable for Finland if the temperature is uh, one or two degrees higher here, um, but uh, it might be a catastrophe in, in Zambia or in, in, in another part of the world. 
And that's why we have to cooperate globally, uh, because it's a global problem. And uh, I think what also is very important, the science and the technology has to be exchanged. I think uh, what we are doing in ICOS uh, as, uh, on, 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 the, on the research side, on the scientific side, is also important for, for other uh, regions in the world. And it's very good to have an exchange with Chinese, American, Australian colleagues. But also, for example, with African colleagues, we have a project together with uh, some uh, African countries. And there we are also exchanging new perspectives from these countries. And we are learning from them, uh, but they are also um, getting some support to build up a capacity like ICOS in Africa.